and welcome to the medical method. Today we're going to do a video on section 3 of the GAMSAT, uh, particularly focusing on how to work out sort of chemistry questions without doing chemistry. Uh, as you can see I'm in a different location, I'm in Bali, I'm on holidays before we start medicine so I'm trying to get a bit of a tan going, you can't see it very well. But anyway, <coughs> the, the aim of today is to try and explain how I went about finding patterns in questions rather than going through the arduous process of trying to learn intense amounts of chemistry. Now there's, there's credit to both ways of doing it. You can go through first year chemistry, study your ass off, but to be honest, when you get in the actual GAMSAT, you'll have questions that are at a level beyond whatever you learn. Um, they'll have multiple different functional groups. You won't be able to completely understand whether it's an electrophile or nucleophile, and it's very difficult to actually understand how the reactions are going to go forth and to get the correct answers. Um, and like, like the GAMSAT online says, they have lots of details about, like they do explain the reaction, but it's all superfluous information. What they always give you is a simple reaction diagram, okay? Um, and I'll put it up there. I'm going to put up an example because it's the easiest way to explain it, okay? So you have the first group that will have, I don't know, a carbon, central carbon with a bunch of functional groups, but they always break it down to like R, R dash, R dash dash, R triple dash, okay? And they'll add some sort of uh, electrophile, nucleophile, doesn't matter. And it'll be a complex reaction where the R groups move, okay? And then move into the next one. Now, I, I, in my second attempt at GAMSAT, my chemistry knowledge was particularly faded. I didn't really remember much. I couldn't, definitely didn't completely understand how the reactions were gonna go forth. All I did was follow where the R groups go and then actually find the answer based on that. So, so what you do is you get your question. So it'll, the question will have real functional groups instead of the R's attached to the group carbon, okay? What you do is you draw a little diagram on a piece of paper and just label what each R group is in terms of the functional groups, okay? I'll keep on putting examples up as I talk because that's the easiest way. So for example, if you have C with those four R's and let's say R dash is an OH, um, R dash dash is a carboxyl, R triple dash is just another carbon chain and then the other R is a hydrogen. Okay, and then you follow the reaction and relabel the products based on what where the R's are. Forget about how the reaction actually moves, none of that shit. Just actually look where the R's move, okay? And once you get once you actually do that, you'll find that getting answers to those questions are very easy. The only stuff that you actually need to study the pure science of is chirality, which is not that hard. Um, the whole, you know, like left, right, RS, all that business, you've got to do it. Um, look up uh, Khan Academy. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, Khan Academy has lots of really good videos on chemistry. Basically, the whole point of that sort of website is to teach kids that like don't have any education really hard concepts. So it's really, really good if you find that kind of stuff difficult. Same with physics, you need to learn optics, you need to know force, so all the force equations practice, get your 12 physics books and just do the questions. It's the only way you can guarantee that you're going to be able to do it. But again, most of those questions, you can use some sort of logical approach to find an answer, but it's not always that easy. Um, what else? And then yeah, the pure problem solving questions are also quite difficult to sort of tackle. I would head towards a, what kind of approach would I do? I would, I would try and do lots of problem solving questions. The best way, like I've always said, is to get practice papers. So just, you know, whatever. Um, I'm not gonna advertise different papers, but I know prep gene is terrible, but basically any papers that have questions that need, need you to think abstractly to solve problems will work. Um, so you could even use MCAT, UMAT, GAMSAT, doesn't matter. Use intense problem solving, try and work through them. The more you do, the faster you get at it. And you have to remember that when you're in section three, I can't remember, look, it's not an exact figure, but if I got 100 in section three, okay, that means I can't have got many questions wrong. 
But in my practice papers, I was probably getting 70 or 80% right. That's when I was doing really well. So you need to focus on getting to that sort of mark. I wouldn't stress if you're getting 10, 20% wrong regularly. That if you got to that point, that's good. Because the questions are so abstract that it's almost impossible to get every question right. Um, so yeah, I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, I hope, hopefully whatever I put up there actually helps you out because I know it's a difficult concept to actually explain without showing you pictures. And yeah, comment, rate, subscribe, ask me any questions in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. Thank you.